Okay, uh, photos it is. Thanks so much for describing this um, as, as the relevance of, of, of the, the logo. And it's, it's, it's well thought out, Cheryl. It, it really is. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I, I, I know I spent a, a little bit of time and energy um, trying to talk you into going the other route that, we, that I was mentioning, and that's branding yourself as graphic designer is branding yourself as to the, the degree that you're getting. But you seem pretty adamant about this, and, and I respect that. So let's go with it, okay? Now, what you say about this being almost like a pen, I agree. It does add a kind of a neat touch. I totally agree with you. It's the way you've cleaned it up. It, you've really done it, – it helps tremendously. I hope you can see that. Um, it, definitely. Look at the P. It's just it's – a, it's a really smooth, almost looks like – I can see a Sharpie writing that out. And so I agree with you that that adds a, how did you, um, bringing a more personal connection to the design. So I agree with you there. I think that was, that was a good thinking. That's good conceptual development. That's good concept. That's good, Cheryl. That's really good. So great job there. Peter's half I The type is so much better now, isn't it? I'm going to go ahead and say I think it still might be a little bit tightly kerned. Now, if you plan on using the logo on black, which it looks like you do, um, let's get your PDF up so we can see what I'm talking about. Um, don't forget, now, th there's some things that are happening in the black, and that, in that it's good that you're using a sans serif, um, and it's okay that it's an all cap, but let's take a look at what happens when we back off a little bit. At a distance, those, are, those letters are so tightly kerned that it's, it's almost becoming difficult to read and that wouldn't even, now it's almost impossible do you see what i'm saying how everything starts touching together and it does it's called a vibration effect and it's caused by actually it's caused by uh vertical lines as they come too close together in letter forms and it cre and, and reverse type and it creates this kind of vibration a visual vibration that the easy fix there is to open up your kerning um, so, okay, and plus I, I think that that kerning could probably span the word photos much, much more effectively anyway. So now listen, now what you're saying about uh, Peter's Hoffheim and the photos itself, I'm going to go ahead and say it might even be worth it if you were to take Peter's Hoffheim and move it down a little bit as not to obstruct photos and that whole marker kind of handwritten photos effect okay and then you say this though but this is something interesting that you say and I just want to talk about elements and principles of graphic design for one second because in your writing you say um, that you want to have you stay monochrome so it will work on both a black and a white background all right, now the question you have to ask yourself, is that actually happening here? And I'm going to say it's not, especially on the white. And the reason I'm going to say that is it's, 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 it's contrast. And you're losing contrast in the word photos because it's a gray, it's a light gray, which is going to recede in the composition anyways. This is going to look um, like it's further behind to the eye. Even if they weren't touching, and, and you had that dimensionality right there, as photos is in that that uh, uh, light gray color, it, it's going to recede further in the composition than a, a black typeface all day long, even if they're not touching. So with that natural phenomenon of that light color receding in the composition, in conjunction, um, it, well, let me show you what happens. It's a lack of contrast. It's a classic example of what happens when we don't have contrast. And you can see that that word is clearly now it's not even visible. So, the, so what you're talking about is kind of, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's, it's really working here. I mean, I, if up here at this distance, absolutely, it looks phenomenal. But you have to think about versatility, okay? The worst thing that, see what I'm saying? It's just gone at that point. So, so, you know, the worst thing that could happen is somebody not recognizing your logo. And that even includes from a distance. If you have a brochure on a table and somebody can see that brochure, but it's like this on the table from a little bit of a distance, they don't see the whole logo. Well, that's telling a, not telling a whole story. Do you see what I'm saying? So for that reason, I would consider, Cheryl, I would consider increasing the um, contrast on the white on, on black version, uh, the, the, I'm talking about the top version. 
Okay, so increase the contrast on that and and think about you know, where you'll go from there. Now, the 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 black and white or the 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 logo since it's 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 a grayscale logo anyway. I, I don't think you have to worry about the legibility of working that into the the actual logo. So I don't think you need to show your reverse logo unless you really want to. And, you're, and once you 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 really finish this up, and when I say finish it up, I'm talking about contrast and just basically removing, and watch your turning and and watch your placement. And other than that, I'll tell you what I think. I think you're looking good. I really like the the philosophy behind the logo. It's well thought out. Good job. Thanks, Cheryl.